Fujifilm have just announced their latest camera, the X-T5. I've been using Fuji's X-T bodies for the past five years at this point and have continually been impressed with both the versatility and quality of these cameras. Interestingly, Fujifilm have decided to shift the focus of the X-T5 onto photography. Where the X-T4 was more of a hybrid photography and video camera, the X-T5 is photography first while still retaining some pretty impressive video features. Following the release of Fujifilm's video focused camera bodies, the X-H2 and X-H2S, they clearly feel that the X-T needs to get back to his roots and focus on photography once again. So Fuji have made a number of notable changes to the camera body this time around. Firstly, and probably the biggest change is the screen. So as this camera now prioritizes photography, there is no longer an articulating screen like we saw on the X-T4. Instead, they've reverted to the free axis screen that we saw on the X-T3. I actually do prefer this change, both for photography and video. I much prefer being able to pull the screen out from the bottom. It makes shooting from the hip a lot easier. It makes shooting from the low down a lot easier. And also, when I'm filming video from a low down angle, it's much easier to just pull the screen out rather than use an articulating screen. The screen has also been positioned so that it lines up perfectly with the sensor, making it easier to use the screen at the back for taking photos and filming accurately. On a quick side note, if you do like the look of the photos in this episode, they were all edited using my preset pack, which is currently on sale and also help support this channel. If you're interested, I have a link down below in the description. Also, if you can hit that thumbs up button, it makes a massive difference to the channel. And if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe. Interestingly, the X-T5 is actually gonna be both smaller and lighter than the X-T4. This sparks a recent trend in photography where every new camera seems to be larger and heavier than its predecessor to fit in improved sensors, in body stabilization and processors. Fujifilm have made improvements in all of those fields while managing to make a camera body which is both smaller and lighter than the X-T4. As for the internals, the X-T5 has Fujifilm's latest 40 megapixel sensor. This is a big jump up from the 26 megapixel sensor that we saw on the X-T4, which means we'll be able to capture higher quality photos and be able to crop our images without losing too much detail. Fujifilm also stated that the new sensor with its improved megapixel count will be able to capture better color tonality. So in theory, there should be visible improvements in image quality over Fujifilm's previous XT cameras. There's also an improved IBIS system with seven stops of stabilization, which will make filming scenes handheld that much easier. And Fujifilm's latest autofocusing system, which has already been showing impressive results in both the X-H2 and X-H2S will be included in the X-T5. These improvements paired with Fujifilm's new X-Processor 5 should mean we get a significant increase in both video and photography performance and quality compared to the X-T4. But obviously, it's hard to say for sure without actually testing out the camera. On the video front, the X-T5 can film up to 6K video and also has Fuji's new F-Log2 profile, which increases the dynamic range recorded. It is worth noting that due to the increase in sensor resolution, Fujifilm have released a list of lenses which can fully utilize the 40 megapixel sensor. Now, unfortunately, these do not include Fuji's older lenses, notably my favorite lens, the 35 millimeter f1.4. So it still remains to be seen how Fuji's older lenses do perform on their new 40 megapixel sensor.
Also, the XC5 only accepts SD cards. You can't pull a CF Express card in there like you can on the XH2 and XH2S. This means you cannot record ProRes internally and you're kind of stuck with the same options as you had on the XT4. So it remains to be seen how good the XT5's video is compared to the XH2, XH2S and even the XT4. As for price, the XT5 comes in at $1,700, which is around what the XT4 was at launch. It's significantly cheaper than the XH2S and is around the same price as the XH2. So as for my final thoughts on the X-T5, I think it's a significant upgrade over the X-T4. I've already actually pre-ordered the X-T5. I use this camera for my professional work, both video and photography. And I feel like there's enough new features and upgrades to warrant getting the newer X-T5. So I pre-ordered it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So please drop those in the comments down below. Huge thanks for watching this episode. You can continue to support this channel by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, remember to hit subscribe as well. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.